Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to West's Angling. You're joining me at Rosemary Wood Fishery for another fishery review video today. We've just taken our stuff down to a peg. Uh, one of my subscribers, Dylan, has recommended this fishery and uh, a couple of other people, to be honest with you, so I was excited to try it. It's a little bit of a drive for me. It's about an hour from Manchester, so it's not close at all. It's on the outskirts of Ormskirk in Liverpool. Dylan's told me to fish the couple of pegs just after the bridge. So, if we look, so this is before the bridge, I'm guessing, from the car park. Looks like a lovely fishery. Seems to be really well maintained. And these are the two pegs after the bridge. They do look like good swims. I like all these reeds. It looks really carpy. It's just turned first light, so I'm sorry if it's dark on the GoPro. I think it's predominantly carp in this fishery. Apparently there's some really nice ghosties in. So I'm going to be trying to get one of them out today, I think. I've been told that robin red pellets do really well here, so I've got something to try. Now, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to give this a go. I've got some two mils to go on the method feeders, robin reds. Hopefully they take on water. I've got a feeling robin reds have got quite a high oil concentration, so uh, whether they sit on the method feeder right, I don't know. But I've brought some ground bait just in case they don't work. But I think we'll be all right. So I'm going to get them in some water and get them a sat absorbing some of that just so they get nice and sticky, hopefully. So we're going to give them a go on the method feeder, fish in the wafters, and probably, let's put these back in the bag, I'm probably going to have one rod, maybe three foot off this island here, and then I might have another rod over here to the bridge. I'm going to have to be careful that a fish doesn't shoot off under the bridge, otherwise I'd never get it out. So I'm going to have to fish with a tight drag on the bait runners. I'm going to have my rod pod set up and fish the uh, method feeders on the bite alarms. Looks like a lovely fishery. Really nice. I don't think I'll be coming here often purely because of the distance for me. But at least you guys get a good idea if you're local um, to see if you want to come down and give it a go. Hopefully the weather's going to be nice today and we get a little bit of sun. So it must be a popular fishery. There's uh, six anglers already here and it's a weekday. Um, pricing, I think it's £12 for two rods, but I'll confirm that when they come round for the money. I don't think there's any kind of honesty box here or anything like that. I haven't seen any. So my dad's just getting himself set up now. My dad's going to be fishing it on his bite alarm, same as me with his specimen rods. Right, let's get these Robin Red 2 mils soaking and we can get fishing, can't we? Have you seen much activity, Dad? A couple of swirls and that. Right, let's see how these are going to do on the method feeder. I don't know how well they're going to absorb water, that's my only worry. But we're going to give them a go. Me and my dad fishing, so I'm going to mix up most of this bag, I think. Sure there's plenty of water in there with him. All right, we'll see how they take on water. Let's put a little bit more in. Let's see how they take on water. Yeah, I've never tried Robin Reds on the method feeder before, so I'm not sure how they perform. But I think they'll look nice. You'll get a nice contrast with the wafters. And if they like the Robin Red pellets, then these two mils will definitely draw them in. Got some more uh, wafters for us to try. <laughs> so salted caramel. And uh, I believe these are quite good. These power score packs, I, th I think they'll be they're a good colour them. And I've also got some mainline ones. Sell. They smell nice, or a coconut flavour. So we'll give them a go today at some point, I think. But we'll kick it off on the pink wafters. <laughs> Trusty pink wafters. And we'll see how we get on. 
them guys down the bottom went straight over there so they must have a favorite peg as well who knows just got me my rod put out ready to set up there at the end of the day they can't move around that's that's the main thing they'll be different places at different times of year there's some bubbles coming out just out from the peg there what about fifth, about 12 foot about 12 foot out from the peg here so well that might be that might be worth one rod and then the other ones that reads and dad giving these a mix up every couple of minutes dad's obviously waiting for these robin red two mils to be ready we're both going to be using these today so if you're coming here off the postcode it's fairly tricky to find isn't it dad so it takes you direct to the village and what you want to do is you want to carry on straight past the village some more bubbles coming up just about six foot off them reeds um you want to carry on straight past the village and then you'll see a, a rapeseed field on the right hand side obviously depending on what time of year you're coming but in spring everything's in flower so it's really visible you'll be able to see that and then it's just a right turn and there's a big barrier across the fishery which was obviously open fishing here from dawn till dusk we were here for first light there's plenty of bubbles coming up so i'm confident that we're going to catch today i'm eager to get a rod out i must uh oh they're binding nicely oh that's oh, brilliant yeah. them. they're going like a purple color they started off like a dark red i don't know whether to go with the uh the bigger wafter approach like i did last week because that seems to work really well for us so i might give that a go on one rod and then on the other rod fish the smaller wafters like an eight mil so fish look like this on one rod i was lazy last week when i was packing up i didn't bother taking my hook lengths off but they need changing anyway i'm going with my large net looks as though my dad's just cast out i'm gonna put some new hook lengths on these Fishing with 10 pound main line today, Daiwa sensor, uh, 6000 DL reels, Shimano, and also my Grace Prodigy TX one and a quarter test curve specimen rods. They're 12 foot. Just gonna put these hook lamps to one side because I don't think there's anything wrong with them. And I sometimes use these used hook lamps on like quick sessions and stuff like that, just so I don't have to tie any more up. Luckily for this session, I have tied some up. So, I've actually tied these up with these little bait uh, spikes with a ring swivel. It's got a tiny little ring swivel and then a tiny little bait spike. So, I'm going to give them a go on the bigger wafters. So, I'm going to stick with the DNA baits, half tones in white, because that's been working for me. And then, just bait spike them on nice and soft them wafters and that'll give a great presentation and also i'm going to get movement on the uh the little ring swivel there i'm not going to bury these in the method feeders because i'm all i'm only using small method feeders these are a 30 gram but it's enough to hook the fish and they're only cheap method feeders which is what we want we don't want them to break the bank So I'm going to load up the feeder and get this first rod out. Hopefully the bite alarms that I've got on here have some charging. Oh yeah, so they're all right, them rubbing reds. Oh, that sounds like he's in. Like I always do guys, I'll put the address for this fishery in the description for anybody that's interested. I'm going to go just off these right hand read sounds like my dad's in so we're going to have a look what fish he's into in a minute so we're going to go there for this one that nice big waft is going to be sat above those pellets or at least near them there we go let's just go and see what my dad's up to Is it a good one, Dad? Yeah. Straight into a fish, eh? It's a good sign, isn't it? Looks like a leather cap. Look at this, leather cap. I think there's quite a few bonny carp in here. I think there's, they, they mix up the colours and shapes and, and, and uh, breeds of carp in. 
Like I said, I think there's a lot of ghosties. Yeah, nice fish. Right, I'm going to get my other rod out. Great sign though, that. Really good sign that we've had a fish in the first five minutes. Now, if you don't know how to tie up your own method feeder hook lengths, guys, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to a video showing you how to do that that I've made. Really straightforward and simple, and it can save you a bit of money in the long run. So, on the other one, I'm going to go with an 8mm pink wafter. Absolutely cracking bait. I don't think there's a bait that's better than 8mm pink wafters. Washed out, to be quite honest. Not sponsored by Sonya Baits in any way, shape or form, but I just know that they work. And obviously you guys that follow the channel know that they work as well, because you've seen them working on the videos. I'm just going to bury the pink wafter in this this time. There must be quite a lot of attractant in these because they're giving off quite a bit of moisture but at least they've taken on the water enough for it to for the pellets to stick around the method feeder these are oh hey up I need to get straight on this don't want it going under that bridge this is on the big wafter yeah I don't want it uh, certainly don't want it going under that bridge First five minutes. Can you see how having the tight bait runner really helps? Another nice looking carp. Not massive, but really good condition. Really dark that one, isn't it? That's on the white bug. DNA baits. Like I said, I've been having really good success on them. I've caught a few different venues using them now. Yes, first fish. <laughs> what a good sign this is, guys. Both into a fish in the first five, ten minutes. Just using a running rig, banjo feeder, with a tiny little bit of a bait spike. You, can't, you probably won't be able to see this on the GoPro, but. It's just a little ring swivel and a tiny spike. Just got a little bit of rig rubber, just holding the hair to the shank of the hook, which has slipped, just like that. Size 10 hook, nice big feeder hook. Fabulous, obviously. Right, I'm gonna get these rods back out. I'm gonna want a decent bit of separation between these two rods. So I'm gonna have that one over there. And I think that one, just off that island, like I said before, I'm just gonna underarm it out i don't think it's going to need to be mega accurate as long as we're near enough at that island we're going to be fine oh that's not so bad that and the pellet stayed on for the cast which is good i'm going to reuse this bug wafter well worth the drive already i think there's a just send that there's a branch coming out of the water over there i just had to pull it slightly didn't want it going over that branch it's only small but Right, we're back in. Yeah, can you see how these have gone like a purpley colour? I honestly thought that they might struggle to take on water, the rubbing reds, but seem to be all right. I hope oh, bloody hell he's in again. But as these carp are running, they're spooking other fish. I don't know if you saw the bow waves then. This doesn't feel so big, to be quite honest. This is on the pink wafter. 
Oh. Must be all different sizes in here. Probably unhook this one in the net. Right in the side of the mouth there. Ain't milk pink wafter. <laughs> Pull that red rubber back up. It's designed to do that. It's designed to slip down the hook when you get a fish, just so the bait moves away. They smell so meaty, them robbing red pellets. So I'll spot that. Might actually put you on bank stick cam today because it's going to get a bit hard work, I think, if I'm taking the GoPro on and off. If we're going to be, if we're going to be having a productive day. <laughs> Sunglasses on floor as well. Right, see, that was definitely a fish feeding on the feeder. Won't be long until one of these goes off, I think. Got my own hooking mat down here just in case we get a lump. West is angling towel. A few of you have been asking for a Wessie's angling towel, and if I sell them, um, they're about 10 quid to make, so it's not really worth it. Um, but you know, if anybody wants to buy one, I'll, I can have some made, but I think they'll be about 15 quid with the postage and stuff. If anybody's interested in that, just let me know. A couple of you have been asking what other merchandise I've got available. I've got two XL hoodies left, uh, they're black and orange. So if anybody's interested in anything like that or wants to know what kind of stock I've got or anything like that, just let me know. It's probably best if you send me a message on the West's Angling Instagram. My God, it's so busy. There's about nine other people here. It's a Tuesday. What's going on? Never that busy around us. So my dad's just been talking to one of the fellas down the bottom, aren't you? Yeah. So he said that he had 21 carp out last week. He said he give, usually gives it a miss at a weekend because of how busy it gets. It's absolutely hammered, which I can understand if there's nine people here already. What is it? What time is it? Half seven? 20, 20 to eight. 20 to eight. So it must, <laughs> it must get busy. Oh, yeah. um, says he Six. gives it a miss on a Mondays as well because of how much bait's gone in over the Saturday and Sunday, which makes sense. Yeah, you go to about 12 pound in here. Do they? Yeah, it's in all the really bigger fish in the big lake. Right. So they've got two lakes here at Rosemary Wood. The uh, the bigger lake, which is over the back, has got the big ones in, and uh, they go for about twelve pound in here. But uh, it must be a good stock because we've had we've had three fish out already, haven't we? Oh, yeah. So. There's a lot in the five pound, five six pound sort of. Which is ample, isn't it? There's loads. Of, they can see them swimming everywhere. Oh, yeah. When I hook a carp down here, um, you can see the bow waves of the other fish moving yeah, out the way. Yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> so it must be, it must be jam packed. But nice place, plenty of trees, a bit of a woodland fishery, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Private. It's nice. Right in the countryside. So if you're from the Liverpool area, give it a go. My dad's just saying that it'd be a very good venue for the float. I think it probably would. There's a lot of fish just at float length out from here. There's plenty of bubbles coming up. There's a guy just uh, putting his tackle down on the, the peg on the opposite side of the bridge. Really humid day today. Quite mild. Been a long time since I've used rubbing beds. And I've never tried them on a the method feeder like this, so a bit of a test. Seems to be working okay so far. If I keep catching these smaller carp, these one, two pounders, I'll probably put a bigger hook bait on both of them. Probably go to like a 12 mil wafter or maybe even a 12 mil boilie. I've got some 12 mil tiger nut boilies with me that I'll be able to bait spike. Just had a savage liner.
There you go. Free plummet. That's a couple of quid's worth. Buried in the mud down there. I'm going to recast the rod that I had the uh, that big liner on before. It's probably dragged the feeder. Probably better not cast him where that fish, just in case somebody goes out on the side of the island there. Uh, gets busy. Really taking on that water now, these Robin Reds. I'm impressed. Working nicely. Moulding. So if you find that your pellets have gone a little bit too far and they've gone a bit too soggy, if you just add in a couple of handfuls of So many bubbles coming up just out here. Yeah, as I was saying, but I was rudely interrupted. You put a couple of the dry ones on. It'll just help them break up when they're on the feeder. Let's keep them separated. So on the right hand rod I'm going to recast out but I'm going to put a pink one on this time. I think it will go better with the uh, robin red pellets. That's how it will sit. Chunky little collar. That's pretty much straight away after recasting back out. I think a lot of them are going to be that kind of size. Using big baits on the small method feeders like this can it looks a bit odd, but it can be a really effective technique I've found. So something a little bit different that they haven't seen before. It seems like they just don't expect it. They'll come in, probably feed on the feeder, and they'll see the big hook bait, and uh, they, they just take it normally. It works some places, it doesn't work at others. So I'm thinking here it's probably not a great technique. If there's smaller carp in, they're probably not as likely to come down for those 12 mil wafters as maybe like a five or six pound carp would be. They tend to go straight in for it. What I might do here is swap both of them over to the 8mm wafters and probably give these a try. I know a few of you that are saying that they're really good and you rate them. I think they'll work great with bread on the method feeder because they're white. So it's like match the hatch and you've got a white bait with uh, white bread on the method feeder. So I think they'll work really good. I might try that technique at some point. But we're going to keep on with the Robin Reds and I'm probably going to put one of these Scopex on. Either a yellow one or a red one, I'm not I'm not sure yet. 
probably give both a go at some point today. But we'll give them a go. I'll probably put a smaller uh, banded rig on the right hand rod next time I bring them in. Probably getting most indications on this left one, which is literally just a rod length out. Decent cap, just topped over there by the island. Let's go with the yellow. To start with. So the Sonia Bates Power Scopex. Nice yellow sweet corn colour. Obviously Scopex is a sweet flavour, I think. Yeah. Really sweet flavour. Very similar to the washed out in terms of smell. If you're wondering what feeders I'm using, if you're not following the channel, everybody following the channel will know, it sees uh, cheap eBay banjo feeders, 30 grams, about one pound 50 odd a feeder. I'll put a link from in the description if anybody's interested. Obviously I don't sell them, but I just like to save people a few quid where I can. Times are hard and all that. And if saving your money is not worth a subscribe, I don't know what is, so <laughs> make sure you hit that subscribe button for me. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment down below as well about what I'm doing today. If you're not sure on any of the techniques, always try and get back to people in the comments. I'm going to come a little bit closer to this side rather than tight to the reeds. Got a feeling it's quite shallow here, I don't think it's deep. Ah, right, fishing again. So, got the right one on the power score pecs, and then the left one on our 8mm pink band and wafter. Sun's just come out, bursting through them trees, look. Lovely day. That's what we wanted. In terms of the Robin Red 2 mils, to be honest with you, I wouldn't really recommend them for use on the Method Feeder. They're not really behaving right. Um, you're better off with some standard 2 mils, and if you want to change the flavour, just add attractants. I just think these Robin Reds have just got a little bit too much oil content, which is making them a bit too sticky, so they're just not quite working right. It's taking them quite a while to break down on the feeder, which is probably slowing the bites down, to be honest. Oh, it's come out. That was an absolutely blinding run, that. Again, just under armed out, close in. But that time I didn't bury it in the method feeder. Because I think, like, like I was saying to you before, I think those pellets are just a little bit too sticky with the oils. It is now. <laughs> Got me with the line, I think. Yeah. Must be a decent fish. It's a good fish. I'm surprised it's not brought me. fish this. Must have been going exactly left. Don't take it in line. I've got my bait runner quite tight. Yeah, it is a nice colour. There we go. <laughs> That's a big net as well. Oh, God, it is. That is a nice cone. Look at this one. Oh, that's not Scorpex, that did. Yeah, nice chunky fish. Long fish, isn't it? Alright, let's get it back. 
a proper chunk that you can't get a scale from on the GoPro, can you? No. Not properly anyway. Really nice coming. So I've just been talking to my dad then and I've just been saying that the thing that I've learned about doing these fishery review videos for everybody is that all these places are very similar. You know, I think you're better potentially just picking one that you like and really getting to know that fishery. Obviously you can have a change every now and again, but if you really get to know the fishery, you stand a better chance of uh, having a really good day. You know where the fish are, you know where they're going to be at which time of year. Obviously they've all got slight differences, you know, different scenery, slightly different fish maybe sometimes. Different mix of fish, but mostly they're very similar. Let's get this one back over to the island. It's right tight to that island, that. I think I know why that fish wasn't uh, setting my alarms off. It was because the uh, the line was slightly wrapped around the rod, I think. Oh my god! <laughs> Literally just laid that in the water, out the way. <laughs> it was all here. Where did you put that rod? Did you? <laughs> no, it ripped me rod in. <laughs> so my dad literally just dangled the <laughs> the feeder in the water off the side there. <sighs> Just about grabbed that. <sighs> my heart's gone. So I shouldn't leave your rods unattended. <laughs> oh my god, well, that's going. Can't believe it. Just grabbed it. <laughs> People be watching this thing, video thinking you don't have a clue what he's doing this man. <laughs> it's a nice carp as well. Oh no. Oh. All over the place. I've caught, I've caught a carp on a method feeder off the top. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> it's a nice uh, mirror as well. Good four pound. <laughs> on the method feeder off the top. West is angling. <laughs> if that's not worth a subscribe, I don't know what is. <laughs> Lovely mirror. That's to the island that again. They certainly fight here. Can't deny that. Need to be careful because there's a rig hanging out from that tree up there. Oh, doing a lot of twanging. I wonder if it's far walked. be honest with you guys you probably don't need to fish two rods here obviously I'm doing it for the entertainment factor I think it'll be too full on a fishery but mind you my dad's not doing great not that much and he's fishing two rods I love these robin reds though yes ghosty yes 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 ghosty Got a ghosty on, Dad. That was one of my goals today to get a ghosty. Lovely one. I think it's a ghost koi. 
Really nice fish. This is what I wanted today. I've heard that there's some nice ones in here. It's not massive, but it's a really nice looking fish. Let's have a look at it. Oh! <laughs> Let's get this ghosty on hook. Dad's just playing that other fish. Beautiful carp this. Look at the colours on it. Absolutely stunning. Ghost koi I think. That. Beautiful. Look at that. I want a picture with that. Let's put it in the water for now. What? Yeah, you've turned it right down for some reason. Well, not, not from the, the line up, it? No, it's not big enough, I don't think. Do you want to pack up as well and just net my fish? <laughs> it's beaming. Got the ghosty in the net there, I want a picture with it, so we'll have a good look at it in a second. Yeah, it is pulling line. This one was the closer in one and the ghosty was to the island. Like I said, they're all interesting fish. They're all different colours, mm. different shapes, sizes. Lad in the swim next to me is giving up and moved peg, I think. Yeah, it's not a bad fish going up and down, isn't it? Is it a fully scaled mirror? Mm, no, it's a common but odd scale pattern. Ah, oh, wow. Nice fish. Um, I'll have to move my other rod out of the way. Get yourself in a bit of a faff sometimes when you're fishing with two rods. I'll make sure that we don't dangle that in the water. <laughs> bit of a team effort, that one. I might put some of that carp curse stuff on its mouth there. It looks a bit... Looks a bit infected, that fish. Got some of this, always carry this with you, guys. I think it's like iodine or something like that, but there we go. Just help them heal. Mouth and body stuff. Yeah, I did. Nice carp, nice big scale pattern on it. Not coming. This is its better side. We'll take a look at that ghosty. Look at that. Double hook up. Right, let's get this one back. Let my dad do that. Do the honours. Cheers, Dad. Right, let's uh, take a look at this ghosty. place in a koi pond that. Look at it, it's a nice one isn't it? Yeah. That's some really nice colour on it. You wouldn't mind that for your pond would you dad? No. <laughs> Look at the carnage here, rods everywhere. <laughs> so that was a bite on the pink wafter and on the score pecs so we're both performing. My dad's pig's quiet, I'm not sure why. I just told him to try bread on the, uh, the method feeder. Obviously, because it's such a full on day, I've not filmed everything, but I bet I've had 12, 13 fish so far, and it's not even half nine yet. <laughs> Absolutely epic fishery, it must be really well stocked. Right, that one's back out. Let's get the, uh, the one to the island back out. Obviously my dad helps me a lot when I'm fishing like this, when I'm um, fishing two rods and filming. I can get myself into a pickle sometimes. Let's try a red one this time, that was on a yellow. 
so far so good with the Scopex. We'll try another uh, flavour shortly. Like I said, I've got salty caramel ones with me as well. I think they're new flavours. Well, they're new to me anyway. I usually just stick with my pink wafters because I know they work. I'm not completely burying it in these pellets, as I've said, because they're really sticky and they're taking a while to break down. I'm just gently folding them around. It's going to have to be an overarm again, this. That last time. Try not to take that duck out. Right on the duck, sorry about that. Really bad casting. <laughs> I do think the Robin Reds are bringing them in. I think the scent from them will be really stimulating the feeding. Nice breeze blowing through here. Uh, I've done what I came here to do, which was to catch one of these ghosties. I've not had a ghosty in ages, and I just fancy trying to target one. And I know there's quite a few in here. Also, I've been told. Well, we'll give them a go as well. Salted caramel. I think the white ones would be good, but they don't look like there's many white ones in that tub, annoyingly. And, uh, and these. So, next cast, I'll swap the pink wafter to a mainline cell. And the other one, so probably one of these white salty caramels. Give them a good test out. All kinds of bait tests going on today. <laughs> Might as well while they're feeding, see what works. Could try a little bit closer in as well, where we, <laughs> where we got that carp off the top. <laughs> let's swap back onto a yellow as well. In fact, let's try one of these other flavors. Take a red one off. What else have we got? Let's try one of these mainline match cell. Be a really good contrast with the uh, Robin Reds. This bit of a bleep there straight away. It's a good sign after the recast. Yeah, that'll contrast really well with the Robin Reds. I'm not going to bury it. Need to be a little bit careful here, just because of the tree. It's just a gentle overarm lob. Smash in. Perfect cast that. <laughs> oh, yep, rinse straight away over to the island, tight in. Let's get onto it. Literally straight away, I haven't even turned the camera off, I don't think. Very tight in. See what recasting can do sometimes. Hard to tell whether it's a nice fish or not. It's coming in pretty easy. Swimming towards me. Get my net on the other side. Like I, said, I don't think this one's massive. Tiny thing. Let's see if we can unhook it by hand here. <laughs> it's, it's certainly fighting. <laughs> on the cell. Oh look at it, don't want to let that go. <laughs> a little hook tubing's come off. Should be all right still. I might put another rig on in a minute. I don't think it's going to stop me hooking a fish. Oh, dad's in I think. First time in a while. Yeah, that was on, that was on one of those guys. Mainline match. Dumbbell wafters a cell. Comment down below if you use them. I know the essential cell works well as a flavour from mainline. 
not as tight in that but tight enough just pulled it a little bit otherwise it would have ended up on that island it's not that far to be honest with you and these are quite sturdy rods so yes and keep this away from the other line which is going to be difficult it's right underneath it right underneath the other line that I'm just going to keep my rod tip low there we go just keeping my rod tip low don't think it's big at all another ghosty oh sure what happened then these ghosties you get a really jagged fight with them for some reason the other one was the same Another ghosty, lovely one this again. Oh, straight into the net. Lovely ghosty. Oh, look at that. Waft has come out of the net. I won't put that in the water. <laughs> After last time. Oh, that's slightly better that one. They're all nice fish though, all in really good condition. <laughs> really nice, look at the colours on them. Yeah, they are nice. Smashing. Right, let's get that back. Well, that's what I've come for today. We've caught two of them, so. I think so far the pink waft has still caught the most. Um, Let's try another flavour though, I know that it's working but keep testing these different flavours out, chopping and changing. Right, let's try one of these. Salted caramel, the brownie orange one. Oh, yep, went on this one. Feels like a slightly better fish. It's holding. Yeah, not even got me. This was on the, the main line again. Sell. There you go. Dad's in now. All go. This was over to the island. So they seem to be on the centre line and tight to the island. I'm impressed with these main line sell. They're getting me pretty quick bites recommended to me by somebody <laughs> is that what you've been waiting for <laughs> little bream hey don't put it back in my swim that bream <laughs> this is a nice fish <laughs> here we go it's coming in oh tail walking they swim right into you and then tend to fight under the rod tip I'm not going to take them all to the unhooking mat, I'm just going to use this little, that's a nice fish, oh, kicking, on the main line, cell wafter, size 10 hook. Yeah, I'm impressed with these, white cell wafters, might have to get some more, <laughs> my dad's my dad waited all that time all that time <laughs> and it was a little bream oh dear that's fishing for you look we're fishing one peg apart that's it <laughs> crazy isn't it is it because i'm getting it close to the island see that's not as close as it has been Usually when I'm that far away, it's a little bit longer for a bite, but we'll see. Let's get this one out on the uh, salted caramel. Oops, a bit far that. So I'm literally fishing, I don't know, a rod length from, away from my dad's swim here. And then one to the other side of the island here, just on the point. And I've had, what, 15 fish now and... 
and, and dad's had one in the brain crazy so my dad's gonna have a walk down to that other lake for you just so you can have a see on the uh, the gopro so he's gonna show you around that other lake and you can uh, you see whether you want to fish that one this is the second car park some toilets here as well at this one a couple of portaloos and then you just carry on to the second lake rod that was tight into the island that I just cast out. Feels a heavy fish. It's hard to tell though, isn't it? Really tight into the bank. I think that's what is um, getting the fish. Being really tight in to that far bank on the island. They don't seem to want to touch it if it's three, four foot off. Wolf that up and wafted her down. Yeah. I think most of the guys fishing today are fishing on float. Um, my dad was saying that it, we've, he's not seen much come out down this side. Not seen many other people catch, to be quite honest with you, so must be a location or angling skill. What do you think there? Location. <laughs> Angling skill. Got to earn the badge. <laughs> think my dad's ready for either packing up or ordering some golf clubs, aren't you? <laughs> so if he took up golf, he'd be in the rough all the time. <laughs> Boy. Margin. <laughs> it was a bream, Dad. <laughs> See if it'll come off. Well, impressions of Rosemary Wood Fishery are very good. Obviously, I've had a cracking day. My, my dad's not done much to the left of me, and nobody really else has, has done much. So it could be peg-related, but for the, anybody wanting to come and have a fish out who watches my videos, it's his first peg just after the bridge. And it is a lovely peg, loads of features to fish to and things like that. Would I come again? Yes, definitely, I think I would. Uh, obviously, for me, it's a bit of a trek it's over an hour's drive so it's probably not worth it for a day session so potentially after this fishery review i might never come back here but there's plenty of other fisheries around me that are just a little bit closer um we are going to carry on with the fishery reviews and i'm going to be starting a new series this week coming so that'll be something to look forward to i'm not going to tell you what it is yet i'm going to leave that as a surprise but yes i would definitely recommend this fishery to anybody uh, who's local and uh, wants to give it a shot so there's two car parks here. Oh. Let's get me on get my GoPro on. Try not to lose the fish. Might be a bream this. It's also lumbering in. What a weird fight. Unless it was just swimming towards me. Again, towards the island. Left hand rod though on the white salted caramel. It's not as small as I thought it was. It could have been swimming towards me. It's a little common. Take some line off and we'll get it netted. I think this is the only fish today that's had mouth damage. Let's have a look at it. 
Oh no, it's not too bad. It's not as good condition as the other ones that we've had today, but it's still a nice fish. Good few pound, long one. As I've said to you in other videos, either I do well or my dad does well. We don't seem to both have a good day when we're fishing next to each other like this. I'm starting to see a couple of carp cruising on the top now. It is warming up a little bit. Sun's really bright. Blue skies today. So I'm not surprised that they're starting to cruise. It could affect the fish and it has gone a little bit quiet. I'm still getting the odd fish. But I expect it'll probably go quiet now until... Oh, he says. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's pulling. Need to be careful here. Don't want it going for that bridge. There's power in there though. That was I just moved it to off them reeds over there. Got to be careful it doesn't go under this. Yeah, that's a nice, nice mirror that. Slightly different area. It's worth just trying different areas every now and again. It's coming in now, I think. Powering round. Yeah, here we go. Just hook that in the side of the lip. Look at that. Lovely mirror. Loads of fight left in it. still cold that water so as i was saying before before i was rudely interrupted by that fish uh it's good car parking so there's two car parks there's one just as you come in it's just by the fields so you can park on this side and also there's a car park just just up there is it dead so there's a bit of a dirt track that comes down and then there's a car park that goes to that side and then i think you can park behind your pegs on the other lake the other lake's got the bigger fish in it this has got carp up to about 12 pound. Loads of different uh, species of carp though. Like I said, there's leather carp here, there's ghosties, there's mirrors, there's commons, and I've caught all of them today. So a really good mix of stuff to target. I'm impressed with the place so far. I just tried off them reeds on the right hand side again, and I managed to pick a, a mirror carp up there just then. The bailiffs come round for the money. It is 12 pound for two rods and seven pound for one rod. So it's an extra five quid for another rod, which is a little bit expensive but i think that's why most people are fishing one rod so the one thing i will say is if you do want to make sure that you get a peg here i would turn up early like my dad said before there's loads of anglers on the lake there's more turning up every every few minutes luckily we're only doing a morning session so it's not really affected our fishing but uh yeah i think it can get busy this fishery so obviously you've had my thoughts on rosemary wood fishery i'd come back like i said it's a bit of a trek for me it's a bit of a drive so I wouldn't be coming here often, but what do you think, Dad? Would you come back? If, <laughs> I know you've not had such a good no, day, but... No, uh, it looks a good fishery. It must be a good fishery because both lakes are packed and it's a Tuesday. Yeah. So that tells you everything. Uh, it's just the distance, really. It's, it, it's over an hour for you. And it, it, it's 50 minutes for me, like... Yeah. You know, and... Is it any better than, than my local fisheries? Probably not. There are, but it is nice, and I would like to fish the other lake, the big lake. Yeah. That looks good. I do yeah. quite fancy that. Yeah, obviously my dad went round and I've got some shots for you before, so I'll put them on. But it's much, much bigger, the other lake, and the fish go bigger in there as well. I've not had a day like today in a long time, have I really? No. Catching this many fish. Well, yeah, you've had over 15, I think, haven't you? I've had about 20 fish. So we started fishing about 7 and it's coming up to 12 o'clock now. We're going to give it another half an hour and then pack up. The sun's really high in the sky and obviously we're only doing the morning session. Only a short session today, but I wanted to come here, do a review for you. But we do rate it. Like my dad said, it must be a popular fishery because it's full and it's a Tuesday. Recommend it? Definitely, yeah. If you're local to the fishery, definitely. Yeah. So I just want to say, once again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next West's Angling.